This is the worst thing in here. It's that doll. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna stare at it though. So you you can take the picture, but I'm not gonna stare at it because that is that has done badly bad harm on a lot of people. I am inside of the Warren's Occult Museum, completely alone right now, with the most haunted items, the most demonic items in the world. And standing in front of me is the most haunted and the most demonic item in the world. The real Annabelle doll. I know again. What? Bro, every time I get by this doll, like I feel like I gotta do no, 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 go outside, go outside, go outside, James. Oh, sh Left. In other words, you okay? He's gotta go to, he's gotta, he's, he's, he's having another problem, James. I don't know what's going on. That's really, that's like the second, third time. Yeah. That's probably the worst thing we have in this whole museum. He said, if that doll can do anything, let it do something to me right now. Put a slash on me. I put him out of the building. He was on a motorcycle. Three hours later, he was dead. I had the opportunity of a lifetime to film at Ed and Lorraine Warren's occult museum with the most evil and demonic items in the world, including the real Annabelle doll. Now, when I got this phone call basically inviting me to come here, my heart like, sank. This is a dream of mine. This is something that I've wanted to do before I even started YouTube. Now, obviously this place has been closed for what, seven years now? Not many people have stepped foot inside of this building since. And I'm in good company because the people who have are some amazing YouTubers. And when we got this phone call, I, I didn't know what to think. I was so excited. I, I just repeatedly said, yes, 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 whatever, yes. I don't care when, what, I will make time for this. And the thing is, I was so excited and you know, my, my team that came with me was so excited that Maybe we lost track and lost focus of obviously where we're going with all of the items that are inside of here. We weren't prepared for what we were about to experience. Now, my friend was very badly affected by what was inside of this building and some may say that he was even attacked. Uh, however, you'll see that inside of this video today. And I got to spend some time inside of the museum completely alone. This is a very rare occurrence and I want to give a big shout out to Tony Spera, the son-in-law of the Warrens, for allowing us to come in here, let alone letting me stay in here completely alone. And when I was alone inside of the Warrens Museum, I experienced something so dark, so evil that, you know what? I'm going to wait to show you that in the video because my I can't even explain that into words, what we experienced this day. Now, I want to say really quick, if you guys can, please leave a big like on this video for not only Tony Sparrow for allowing us to come in here, film here, investigate here, but leave a like for the Warrens, Ed and Lorraine Warren as well. They are obviously idols of my, anyone who does paranormal videos or just has any interest in the paranormal knows who Ed and Lorraine Warren are. They are absolute legends, the most famous paranormal investigators to ever live and this is their legacy. Before we do get into the video, I have to make a couple of disclaimers, some very important ones. Now, number one, and probably the most important, do not look Annabelle in the eyes. This is very important information. It doesn't matter if you're watching from a video, it is that powerful. This is the most evil being on this planet. And it is said whoever does make eye contact for a prolonged period of time will be brought very bad misfortune, bad experiences, and a lot of things involving fire. So just to keep that in mind. They say that you're not supposed to look Annabelle in the eyes and I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I am not. I'm looking in my camera and I'm not looking her directly in there. Whatever you do, do not. This is pure evil. Number two, I wanna give a big disclaimer because my friend had a really bad experience. He was attacked, he threw up a total of six times. So on numerous times throughout this video, you will see that. And it's very unfortunate. However, it got to a point where they didn't even let him back into the building because they said that he was being affected so much. He was vulnerable to the bad energies and entities that are inside of this building. So keep that in mind as well. Disclaimer number three, and this is a religious approach. 
on my channel, I've been to many evil locations, some, some downright dark locations. And I've had many comments from people say that they have been affected directly from just watching a video. Now, a lot of people do believe in this. However, I'm not exactly sure. But barring that we went to one of the most dark and evil hell, the most haunted location in the world. If you do believe in some sort of prayer, comment it down in the comment section below. Say it to yourself and, you know, let them know that they cannot affect you. It, can, it cannot harm you and so on. Not only that, but you're going to see my friend James get affected and attacked on numerous occasions as if he was clouded by some dark entity. And then you're going to see what happened to me when I spent some time in the Warren's Museum completely alone. Now, the first thing that you're going to see is us get blessed with holy water. Now, this is a normal thing here. You have to get blessed with holy water before you step foot inside of the building because it is believed that this is a sort of aura. It is almost as if it is armor. It protects you from the dark entities within. Even the owner and the head paranormal investigators of the Warren's Museum do this every single time before they step foot into this place. That's how serious this is. So you're about to see that, but also before we get into it, leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Hope you enjoy. Take a look. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, yeah. So, that's what you did, the Holy Trinity. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Close your eyes, envision yourself bathed in a whole very bright white light. We call that a Christ light or God's light of protection. And you ask God to protect you from anything that might be evil, demonic, or inhuman. And if you have faith in the Lord, Amen. you're going to be protected. Yep. All right? All right. That is your good. that is your suit of armor. Awesome. This is probably the most haunted place that you'll find in the country. It's because of the artifacts that are here, guys. You know, these are all artifacts that were taken from haunted locations, from places that practiced Satanism, the black arts, witchcraft, witchcraft incantations, incantations and rituals. It's like if you went to a church and had things blessed by a priest, it takes on the essence of holiness, of piousness, because through those, through those prayers through an ordained member of the clergy, through intercession from God, it's infusing that with goodness, with kindness, with love, with holiness. But people who use these things in a bad manner would use them to hurt other people perhaps, to cause chaos. Anything that's to do with black witchcraft, the demonic, with Satanism, is not for good intentions. Right. You know, good intentions are something that's left for people who have good intentions. Mm -hmm. But people who have other than good intentions or nefarious uh, intentions would infuse these things through rituals. You know, they say, you know, words have, have uh, meaning I and mean, thought has meaning. Well, when you infuse something with the incantations of witchcraft, mm -hmm. Satanism, the black arts, you're giving them bad vibes. Everything's a vibration, remember. Mm -hmm. Holiness is a vibration. You're right. at an energy level. That's a good energy level. This is at a different level. So like these dolls, for instance, these are sent to me. Each one of these dolls was sent to me by someone who had a problem after they purchased them or picked them up or somebody gave them to them. Like if I wanted to hurt somebody and I was mm -hmm. into the black arts and I knew that somebody liked the dolls. I've never heard anybody call it black arts before. The dark arts, the black arts, mm -hmm. black witchcraft. I would just, if I was knowledgeable in, in witchcraft or wizardry or sorcery, I would be able to do an incantation over this doll and then send it to the unsuspecting person. It's almost like voodoo, mm -hmm. like a voodoo doll. Your magic is magic. Black magic is where you would infuse this through these rituals, through these ritualistic type prayers, but they're incantations, mm -hmm. and infuse it with badness, the evilness, and send it off. Right. And remember that like attracts like in the spirit realm, right? So something evil would be attracted to that then. In other words, a demonic entity would be attracted to the evil vibes that you placed on that. You know, so it, it might attach itself like it did to Annabelle. We don't know what happened with Annabelle. All we know is Annabelle was purchased in a thrift store mm -hmm. by a, a woman who gave it to her daughter, who was a nurse. That's all we know. We don't know where it came from before that. It was a used item. Right. But someone could have infused that. Someone could have had that in a room when they were doing rituals. 
yep. and it could have picked up the vibes. We don't know. There's many, many reasons why these things happen. It's like, just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not real. People say all the time, well, it's not real. And I'll say, well, how do you know it's not real? Do you believe in God? And they'll say, yeah, I believe in God. Well, you can't see God. Well, God is everywhere, though. Right. But if I said, go show me a picture of God, nobody has a picture of God. But you believe it because there has to be a faith-based system. Why are we here? Now, why are we here in the first place? Why? Where did we come from? Right? Why are we here? And where are we going after we have death of the physical form? Where are we going to be? So there is a positive in life and there's a negative always. There's always a balance. There's a yin and a yang. Mm -hmm. yep. There's positivity. There's negativity. Like, for instance, in the Bible, there's a quote from Isaiah, which I think I told you already. If you can look it up, it's, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. Mm -hmm. Woe to those who call bitter sweet and sweet bitter. Amen. And to be perfectly honest with you watching this, that's the state of the world today. Yep. Everything seems to be flip-flopped. Because when I was growing up, you had respect for your family. You had respect for police. Yes. Right? Respecting you did your elders. You did the right thing. Respect for elders. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was in high school, and people aren't going to believe this, this is how it's changed. Now, people say, well, that's changed for the better. It's not. Because it's like the broken window theory that they used in New York City. You know, you break a window, you fix it, right? Yeah. And you prevent the cascading effect of crime. Correct. So... A kid in my, my graduating class, which is in the 60s, late 60s, he was sent home from school because he had burgundy colored pants on. Do you believe it? Today, kids can wear whatever they want. Oh, they yeah. can act any way they choose. Right. They can be disrespectful to the teacher. Anyway. If I was disrespectful to the teacher, you know, my father said to me, if, it, if you come home when I was a kid and you tell me that a teacher hit you, hit, if a teacher hit you, I'm going to hit you too because that means you did something wrong. They would never say that to a kid today. They, a, a parent would never say, if a teacher hits you, I'm going to hit you. You know what they'd say? If a teacher hits you, we'll sue the school. Yeah. Right. Everything is opposite of what it should be. There's no respect for adults. There's no respect for, there's no dignity left. In other words, you okay? He's got to go to, he's got to, he's, he's, he's having another problem, James. I don't it's know like what's the, going on. That's really, it's like the second, third time. Yeah. Hope right. That happens to people sometimes if they're sensitive. Really? He might be sensitive to this stuff. Yeah, it definitely seems like it. Uh, are we still ta uh, filming yeah, this yeah, thing? Yeah, you're good. So, so the thing is, hope James is okay, everybody. He just had another nausea attack. The Raggedy Ann doll. Yes. That's probably the worst thing we have in this whole museum. That Raggedy Ann doll was given to a nurse in 1970 by her mother as a Christmas present. Mm -hmm. But as most girls do, even 28 years old, she would take the doll to bed with her, wrap her arm around and go to sleep. I'd do the same thing with a pillow. But then she started taking it to the breakfast nook where the arms one morning went onto the table. Mm -hmm. Now she lived with another nurse and they uh, shared the expenses of the apartment which was four blocks away from Hartford Hospital. Right. At that point they told the girls about the incident and one said, I know a medium. So they held a seance that night. Mm -hmm. That was the beginning of many seances with this doll. Uh, they would come home at night and uh, the woman had told them, the medium, that there was a spirit of a six-year-old child in the doll by the name of Annabelle who had been killed outside of their apartment house in an automobile accident. Mm -hmm. Well, there was such a child, but God does not allow a child spirit to go into a doll. This was a devil, a demon, inside the doll which was impersonating the spirit of a child. Well, they treated it like it was a child. They got extra clothing, and they got uh, different types of uh, bracelets and things for it, just mm -hmm. treating it like a little, little girl. They would take it for rides. But then they started to become frightened when things were happening in the house, sounds, knockings, rappings, whispering. And they said, oh, Annabelle went, must want another seance. Mm -hmm. So they would hold the seance going deeper down that road of no return. Then they would take the doll and put it on the bedroom, in the bed, and they'd leave it there. They'd come home after midnight, the two girls, open up the door, and this doll would be standing there waiting for them. Now that doll can't stand. You can see it has very flimsy legs, but I've seen it stand. 
Now these are all the diabolical infestation manifestations that we look for. Well, as time went on, one of the uh, fiancés of one of the girls said, get rid of the doll, burn it, throw it away. He wanted to get rid of that doll. Mm -hmm. He fell asleep one Saturday afternoon. It was this, and the doll was put right across from him on a couch. And the girls were fooling around saying, well now Annabelle, you help us to clean up. Just like a little kid. Yep. All of a sudden he woke up with a start. He was sweating. He said, my God, he said, what a nightmare I just had. I dreamt that Annabelle there was strangling me and he had marks on his throat. Was it psychosomatic? Well, he walks over to the doll, he picks it up, looks at it and throws it right across the room. You're nothing but a rag doll, you couldn't hurt anyone. With that, seven slashes appeared on his body, four in the chest and three on the stomach. The blood came right through his shirt. Wow. Now they were all frightened. Things were flying around the room. They called the High Episcopal Canon in Hartford. He called Father Richard Nolan, Father Nolan called us. We went to the house, exorcism was performed immediately in the home and over the people. Mm -hmm. I took the doll back to my home here where it's in the museum now. At one time I had it just sitting in a chair. But a priest came here one day and he said, uh, Ed, uh, this doll is supposed to be infested by devils. He picks the doll up and he throws it across the room just like the young man in the house. God is more powerful than the devil. I said, yes, Father, you're right. God is more powerful than the devil, but no priest is, no man. On his way home in a brand new car on Route 84, the car went out of control, almost head on it to a tractor trailer truck. It was demolished and the priest was almost killed. The last thing you remember seeing was that doll. A detective, a homicide detective that Lorraine and I were working with, wanted to see the museum. We work on many cases of where children are murdered or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, he came down, he looked all over, and he said, you know, Ed, of all the things here, I can't take my eyes off that doll. At that time, it was still in a chair. Mm -hmm. The phone rang. I said, I'll be right back. Don't touch anything in this room. Everything in here is unholy, unblessed, the opposite of what you would find in a church. Well, I wasn't even up there talking for 10 minutes. I heard him coming up the stairs. He had to come through the passageway into the Halloween room and up into the kitchen. This man was a huge guy. He was about six foot three, 250 pounds, used to seeing grisly sights. He was sweating. He couldn't speak. He was trembling. I thought he was having a heart attack. Mm -hmm. I told him to sit down and I'd call an ambulance. He said, no, no, Ed, it isn't that. I said, well, what's wrong? I don't want to talk about it. That's what he said. I don't want to talk about it. Sometimes a little macho in cops, right. you know? Sure. And Lorraine walked in and he looked at Lorraine and I guess he found it easier to talk to a woman than a man. He said, I'll tell her about it, but I don't want her to ever talk about it again. Well, she didn't have to. The doll had been in a chair over one corner of this room. Mm -hmm. When I came in, the doll was over in another corner on the floor. Everything had been knocked over, like he had, there was a terrible struggle here. There was a terrible struggle. This man had picked that doll up. Wow. His aura had mingled with the aura of that doll, and something so terrible occurred that he resigned from the police department three months later and moved to California. Is that right? A young man came in here one day with a bunch of college students. And he, after I told him about the doll and many other things, he came over here. I was standing over near the corner. He started tapping on this glass and said, I don't believe any of this. This is a bunch of hooey. He said, if that doll can do anything, let it do something to me right now. Put a slash on me. I put him out of the building. He was on a motorcycle. Three hours later, he was dead. But getting back to this stuff, this stuff is real. God is real. The devil is real. God is a real entity. And so is the devil. Remember that the devil was created by God. He was an angel first. He, he doesn't create anything bad. But he gives you free will. He gives you the will to be good. You can be a priest if you want. You can be a minister. You can be a doctor, lawyer. Or you can be a drug addict, a drug pusher, a murderer, a killer. Someone who's cruel to everybody else. Which one do you want to be? He's not going to stop you. Mm -hmm. But he will. He will stop you from entering heaven if you're like that and you don't repent. So let's just put that out there now. You can do all you want to do in this life and maybe get away with it. But this is only the beginning of your life. The real beginning of your life, the real rest of your life <clears throat> will be in eternity. <clears throat> Why I say that is, I'm not trying to preach, you know, it sounds preachy sometimes, but sometimes you have to almost sound preachy to get the point across. You and me and everybody watching, this is the beauty part though, will never die. You, Josh, 
How do you say your name again? Jack. Yasko. Yasko. Yasko, you'll never die. Your physical being will. It'll, it'll die perhaps years, years after me because I'm a lot older than you. But I'll never die either. And in the spirit realm, you'll probably see me. I'll be waiting. Maybe I'll, I'll know all the people that I knew in life. Yasko, what I tell you, Yasko? You're here. Here you are, buddy. And look how <laughs> nice it is here. It's true that you, as a spirit, will never die. Spirit can never die. God created, God is a spirit. He's a supernatural spirit. And he created everything that's in this world and the universe and angels and the devils who became devils, not by God's choosing, but by their own. Right. Because God gave you free will. You can be anything you want in this world. That's the beauty. You can respect as many people as you can respect, or you can disrespect all the people. But it's what happens later. There's always a pay, a payment due. You know how they say there's no free lunch? Well, really, there's no free lunch. You can be a real jerk in this lifetime and get away with it. Make money by stealing, by, by, by uh, criminal means, Comedy. doing things. Yep. It's going to catch up with you. Mm -hmm. The poor person, maybe even the poor person, the homeless person on the street corner, may enter heaven before you because he was a good person. Maybe he's down on his luck and wasn't helped. But the whole thing is do the, the right, right thing. thing. When you do good, right? When you do good things, God smiles. The devil frowns. When you do bad things, the devil, frown, the devil smiles and God frowns. Right? And when you do bad things, God frowns, the devil smiles. So you don't want to be on the path where the devil's always smiling. You, you want to be on the, path, the righteous path, the path that's going, that you're going to live in eternity at. Mm -hmm. And that's in heaven. Because if you do go to somewhere other than heaven, there's a lot of people that you may know that are going to be in heaven that you won't see anymore. Your mom, your dad, they'll probably be in heaven. But if you did something wrong and didn't repent, I mean something really wrong and didn't repent, and never prayed to God, never believed in God, you may not go there. Now, that's not me saying it. That's, that's the Bible saying it, that you, you have to repent mm -hmm. to be with God. You have to love him as your almighty Savior and creator. And so with that, I'd like to say that Ed took all these pieces and put them here for evidence. People say, why don't you just destroy this stuff? Well, you don't destroy it because you only destroy the vessel. You don't destroy what's in it. Remember I said spirit can't be destroyed? Right. If there's a spirit within that doll, an evil spirit, because a human spirit cannot be in that doll. That's number one. God would never allow like a little girl to be in that doll or in Annabelle, like the nurses in Hartford thought was in that doll. They thought it was a human spirit that had got killed in a car accident outside the apartment. And that's why they started to really treat the doll as a human being, but it wasn't suck them in that way to think because what is a devil or a demon the father of lies a devil's the father of lies all they want to do is cause chaos in your life yep. and their main goal is to not only just destroy you as a physical and your life today to make it miserable but to prevent you from going to heaven why because they're jealous because they can't go to heaven never you have a chance to go to heaven you can choose right now, which way you're going. They already made the choice. The demonic already made the choice to not be with God in heaven. He's not letting them back in. He's saying, you made your choice. That's it. Because remember, devils and demons are more powerful than we are. And angelic. It's, there's something that's, that's never walked the earth in human form. So it's different than you and me. They were spirits that he created. And they went against his wishes. And now... The door is locked and they can't open it. But our door is ajar. Yep. And if we do the right thing, that door keeps opening more and more, you know. So all these objects were taken for evidence so people would know when Ed talked about, like, the Annabelle doll. When he talks about the dinosaur from The Conjuring 3. When he talks about the shadow doll, the, the satanic idol, the fire doll, the fertility dolls, the, the, uh, curse, the cursed necklace of death or someone put a, a, a pearl necklace on their uh, uh, neck and it felt as if somebody was strangling them to death. They had to, pull the, they had to break the, the pearls off. Things like that. These are real things that happen to people. Mm -hmm. So my 
my message to everybody is, first of all, we want you to come to the Phantasmicon, of course, which is at Mohegan Sun Casino. Just look up Phantasmicon or go to uh, warrens.net, plural, warrens.net or nespr.ticketbud.net. So NESPR is New England Society for Psychic Research, N-E-S-P-R dot ticketbud dot com for tickets. And we're going to have a lot of the artifacts, and we take precautions getting them there mm-hmm. so everybody's safe. And we have a lot of celebrities coming, and we also have a magician, David Merlin, the magician. He's fantastic. He's been to the museum, and he made me a special special little magic case one time. That's awesome. But he's a fantastic magician. I mean, I still don't know how he does so. I, I don't ask him how he does it. He would probably tell me, but I want to keep the magic and the mystery yep, yep. in it. You know, I don't want them, to, oh, that's how you did it. But I can't figure it out. Still no surprise. And so we're going to have that. We're going to have 150 vendors maybe. The fam will be there. James, uh, Omar Gosh might show up. I think he's coming. Yep. And uh, um, overnight, the people from the overnight are coming. Dan will be there. Rivera, me. My wife, Judy, will be there selling bracelets. So awesome. 27th, 28th of October, the 27th is a VIP party. You can buy tickets for that, too. Okay. So in all in all, though, this is probably one of the most haunted places that you're going to be standing in a long time. And before you came in, you know, you and Lou and James, I gave you holy water. You blessed yourself. Holy water. It's like throwing acid at a devil. And mm-hmm. people don't believe it, but it's got that kind of power. The devil's afraid of holy water. The devil's afraid of holy prayers. The devil is afraid of, like the rosary. Yep. If you play the, uh, pray the rosary, you're protected. You envision yourself in the white light, you're protected. It's God's light of protection around your aura. So the devil hates anything that's holy and blessed. And a blessed water on you, blessed water, that's like pouring battery acid on a, on a devil. So... Before coming into the museum, I had my own opinions about demons, the paranormal, and basically all things supernatural. After leaving this place and the knowledge that I gained from Tony Spera, Dan, and Chris, I can wholeheartedly say demons are real and what I experienced inside of this museum was some of the most dark and evil things that I I could have never imagined. This doll caused a fire in the house. This doll was actually in the kitchen when the fire started. And what it, happened? Well, the, the doll didn't burn? The doll didn't burn. Um, but when we were given the doll, her hands were taped. And we actually kept her hands taped. Um, we believe this doll, there's something evil in this doll, which the family didn't feel comfortable having this doll in the house. Really? So it was given to the Warrens Occult Museum. Satanic worship idol, and it was uh, it was found in the woods in Sandy Hook, Connecticut, back in the nineties. Oh my gosh! Now, if you look at it, uh, James, it's about six feet tall, but it was on a grotto of rocks in the woods in Sandy Hook. Yeah, what is satanic idol? That's very yeah, dangerous. I didn't want you to bump into that. About six feet six, I guess, seven feet yep. tall, I guess. That was found in a Sandy Hook area uh-huh. over by Newtown. A hunter had found it. A young hunter. And it belonged to a group of Satanists, powerful group in this area. Mm-hmm. And uh, this young man was almost killed three times for revealing where this idol was. It was in a grotto of rocks where a number of sacrifices of animals had occurred. Could have even been human sacrifices sometimes. But we brought it back here to the museum. We had notified the police of it. We can come around here and shot of it. Yes, we can. And. Um, Lorraine, one day soon after we got it, was thrown 25 feet through the air. She was in a catatonic state for three days. So this group was extremely powerful. He gets up, he starts walking away from the idol on this small pathway, but he doesn't know where he's going, right? Mm. He's lost. As he's walking, his heart's kind of beating pretty quickly. Out of nowhere, this man appeared right next to Eric. And he's on his right-hand side, dressed all in black, mm. and he had a snow-white, short-cropped, snow-white beard, mm. and he had snow-white hair pulled back. About 70 years old. Wow. Walking step for step, James. Step for step with this young man, without ever looking at the young man. Mm. Not looking at his way, not speaking. Now, Eric goes, I'm so scared, 
I wanted to just take an arrow out of my quiver and stab this guy in the chest. I was so oh, frightened. Gosh. I said, Eric, no, you didn't do that. He was not, of course, I didn't stab the guy, but I was scared. He said, I got enough energy up to say, how do I get out of here? The man yeah. never looked over, never spoke. All he did is point to the right like this mm. and walked off to the right. And now this young man starts to double time it. He's going fast. I got to find my car. Mm. He gets to his car. Oh, the, guy's, no. the guy's leaning on his car. Like the old man. Mm -hmm. He's leaning on his car like this, staring at Eric. Eric's freaked out. Well, I, I gotta go. I was just, you know, doing a little haunting. Mm -mm. He didn't know what to say to this man. And he jumps in the car and he takes off. And the guy's staring at him through the rearview mirror. Can see him looking at him. He gets home to his buddies. He's all shook up. Co tells his buddies what happened. They said, why don't you call Ed Warren? He lives right in Monroe. Oh, yeah. It's only a couple of towns over from Sandy Hook. He calls Ed and... He and Lorraine go out there after the kid said he thinks he could find the idol, or the sta he called it a statue. So Ed parks his car on the road. They all go in. They find the, the, the item, the idol. Ed looks at it, takes one look at it, and he says, I know what that is. It doesn't belong here. Uh -oh. The kid says, well, what is it? He says, it's a satanic worship idol. And that man that you were telling me about is a high priest in a satanic cult. It does not belong in the woods. I'm taking it back to my museum. He just happens to glance back towards Lorraine, and she's no longer there. No. She's 25 feet up the road, up the inside the yard here, lying down in a fetal position, semi-conscious. <gasps> Ed drops everything, serious? runs to Lorraine. Lorraine, what's going on? What's going on? Wake up. She wouldn't answer him. He calls the police. They come out, call an ambulance, bring her to St. Vincent's in Bridgeport. She's there for three days. Doctors are doing all kinds of brain tests and everything on her. And doctors can't figure out what's wrong. They told her, we don't know, Ed. We don't know, Mr. Warren. Third day, she snaps out of it. And it's perfectly fine. She goes, I want to go home. Before that, she was like in a, almost like in a semi-coma. She could hardly recognize anybody. She was mumbling. Now she's perfectly fine. And the doctor said, there's nothing wrong with her brain. We did a scan. But she's okay now. And she goes home. The next day, I said to Ed, can we see that idol again, Ed, that's in the museum? So we mm. go in there. And I said, Ed, the doctor's never figured out what's wrong with Lorraine, huh? He goes, no, but they didn't need to tell me anything. I know exactly what happened. I said, what? He said, that son of a bitch. And he gives me the guy's name. He knew the man. That son of a bitch. And he gives me his name, which was a German name. He goes, he did this. I said, what do you mean he did this, Ed? He goes, he is very powerful in the black arts, in Satanism, mm. in witchcraft. He did that as a warning to me because I took, I stole his idol out of the woods, he said. He said, the man was ticked off. I said, well, are you sure it was that guy? He goes, I know it was that man by the description. It was, he gave me the guy's name in German. Well, I'm not telling you the name, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. It's not that I'm trying to hide anything. It's that Ed said to me after he gave me the man's name, which is a German name, and the man was German. He goes, but I'm never going to repeat his name again to you. I said, why? He said, because every time I mention that goddamn guy's name, he says, something bad happens. Mm. That's what he said to me. So that was the end of the story. But about months later, maybe two or three months, four months later, I happened to talk to Ed. And I said, Ed, by the way, that, that German guy, what was his name? I was testing to see if Ed would tell mm -hmm, me. Mm -hmm. You know what Ed says? I'm not telling you the name. I says, why not, Ed? He said, I told you. That something bad happens every time oh, I mention his yeah, name. Yeah, yeah. So I won't say it, even though the man has deceased. He's dead. So that is the story of Did the, you uh, ever of the worship of the name. No, Did because you I don't say the name. I said it once oh, back then. Smart. I don't tell anybody now. I know the name. Yeah. But I believe what Ed said, that this yeah. thing is, that that's, this guy has yeah. powers, even after the grave. You never know, like Did the residual effects of, of someone. Pardon me? Have you ever touched any of these? Yes. I've touched the idol, but I didn't want to. I brushed into yeah. it. But when I do touch it, to move it, it's with a like a comforter around it, and I wear welding gloves. Anything I touch in here, I wear yep. gloves, and Don't I bless myself, it. and I get blessed by a priest, Amen. and I drench my hands in holy water before I even put the gloves on. Mm -hmm. That was instructions from Ed Warren, you know, to not physically touch something with your skin because mm -hmm. your aura, 
your aura will mingle with the aura of that inanimate object. So yeah, we don't want to we don't want to mess with that. But I talked about the shadow doll a little bit over here, guys. Sure. If you want to put a nice camera on this shadow doll. The shadow doll is one that comes to you in your dreams, in a nightmare, and actually can cause a heart attack. A young couple bought it from an antique store, and they thought it was, you know, just an antique, but then we found out that there were animal parts and bird parts and even some human bones in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. What would happen is that a black magician would take a picture of the doll, send it to the couple or person that they wanted to perform some kind of black magic against. Yep. They'd see this, and it's what we call a um, diabolical curse that can come to these people in their dreams. Okay. It comes right into their dreams. Uh, there is such a thing as an evil board. This doll here is the same thing as an evil board. When the picture is sent to you, you take the curse on that goes with it, even though you're innocent. We should be paying respect to these items, not reverence. I don't give reverence to any of these items, but I do have a healthy respect for what they can do mm -hmm. because I know what they can do. These are the opposite of something that's blessed, opposite yeah. of something holy. These yeah. are the unblessed, the unholy. Even though we have them blessed, mm -hmm. they started out being very, very sinister. And how you know how effective the blessing really is? You know, it's like, it's like if somebody says to you, Oh, don't worry, I uh, unloaded the gun. You can put it to your head and pull the trigger. It's unloaded. Yeah, right. I'm an expert. Yeah, and they don't unload the gun and you get killed. Exactly. So you don't just believe that because a blessing was done over this, yep. that it's perfectly safe. The blessings are done about once a month. Oh, okay. So you have by a Catholic like priest. Really? Before we go to the Mohegan Sun. I'd love to come here one day for that. Okay. Before we go to Mohegan Sun, we're going to have a Catholic, a traditional Catholic priest who says everything in Latin, uh -huh. come to the museum. Can I come for that? I'll see if I can invite all you. All right, let me know. If the yeah. priest will allow it. Okay. And we're going to bless all these items, have me blessed, have Dan and Chris blessed, because mm -hmm. we're going to move the items, but we don't take them out of the case. They leave them in the case. Gotcha. And we're going to have them blessed, bless the museum, bless us, do an extra binding ritual over Annabelle and the shadow doll, too, mm -hmm. and the idol, which binds the... Uh, evilness within. So mm -hmm. that's what we're going to do and we hope to see everyone there at the Mohegan Sun Casino. Before we get back into the video, I want to talk about something huge and that thing is PhantasmaCon. Now, you can meet the real Annabelle doll yourself. There is going to be this massive event at the Mohegan Sun Casino in Connecticut. Everyone that you saw in the video today will be there. Not only me, not only James, but you will see Tony, Chris, and Dan there, as well as some of the items. Like I mentioned, the real Annabelle doll. Uh, you're going to see the satanic idol, the shadow doll, the real dinosaur from the Conjuring movies. And it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. This is a huge thing because... They have to bring this, these demonic items in a car to a casino. Like, I wouldn't want to be that guy driving that car. But yeah, there's going to be some awesome YouTubers there. There's going to be the Overnight Crew. There's going to be Exploring with Josh, Seth Borden, uh, me, James, Omar. There's going to be some awesome people there. Not only YouTubers, but there's going to be such huge names that are in the paranormal, involved in the paranormal. And if, if you are interested in meeting all of us, the items, the amazing people that are going to be there, the link to that, where the tickets will be available, will be down in the description below. Make sure to check it out. The date is October 28th. There's also a VIP party the 27th if you want to participate in that. Get a little crunk at the casino, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> but with all that being said... I look forward to seeing you guys there. Tony was so generous and gave James and I a booth so we could meet all of you guys, have some merch laid over, have a whole bunch of things going on. And just to be able to hang out with you guys would be a dream come true. So yeah. So here's the thing. We weren't here for a very long time. We were here for about two hours and we each got our time recording and got all of our footage. However, a lot of my footage had problems. A lot of it was corrupted. And then towards the end, you will see some pretty crazy stuff that I'm telling you, it's like a once in a blue moon thing. Something was affecting my footage. Something was affecting my camera inside of this museum. Now, I want to take a quick second and talk about my friend James. Now, as you can see, he was being affected. On numerous occasions, he was being affected. And I'm going to show some more footage from his video in a little bit of 
some more times when he threw up. Now, if you don't want to see that, I, come, I don't blame you in the slightest. Please skip on ahead. However, this is just very important to highlight how powerful these beings are. Even while being protected, even while being blessed, the unholy that is inside of this museum is so powerful that it can do that to someone. James, you call anything, man? Do what? This is a crazy... I never thought I'd be here, bro. Dude, me either. This is so much to take in. Like, there's so much. I've seen a lot of these dolls before, but, like, dude, they're not real ones. They're, like, the replicas yeah, and stuff. Yeah, but this is the dude, real this deal. this is the real deal. This is the <sighs> holy grail. This is what everyone dreams of coming to, and just being here is the craziest opportunity. Oh, my God. Not again. What? Bro, every time I get by this doll, like, I feel like I'm going to... No, 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 go outside, go outside, go outside, James. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Why? No, shit. Belmar Castle. We drove to Belmar Castle uh -huh. in the van. I thought we were going to get arrested. But we drove in the gate and drove right out. Can we stop it's outside? A, it's a great I feel place. Like throwing up. Okay, he, he feels like throwing up, ladies and gentlemen. Don't. Mm -mm. Let's go right there. That way, please, mm. James. Don't throw up on the objects. Mm, no, I won't. Mm. Okay. James mm. doesn't feel well. Mm. It's okay, James. It's all right. Yep. Mm. You don't feel well. That's fine. No. We're outside here now. Mm. Okay? Yeah. James, I'm going to show him the. While you're doing that, yeah, thanks. I'm, gonna go. I'm just going to show him something. This is the actual sign that Ed made more. Ed Warren made up. Uh, New England Society, which is New England Paranormalology Research Center. Ed actually made that sign up. Also, there's one more sign that if you watch The Conjuring 1, and I believe The Conjuring 2, you'll see this sign here. Don't allow anything evil to affect us. Oh, oh. oh. oh that's not good. Oh, that fucking head of bell. That's what it was every time. Mm. Oh. Yeah, thank you. Towel. Ooh. Man, that's crazy. Yeah. Thank you. Ooh. I think you're right. I think you got to call it quits. So. Yeah. Oh, I'm done. You know, you know I'm not going back in there. So you lost about fucking four pounds. Yeah, I'm not going back in there. Yeah, you should have. Oh, God. It's crazy. You know what it is, too? Every It was every time I was next to Annabelle. The the, the, the real Annabelle. Chris, look at my breath in there. Actually, I got some stuff in my bag. Bro, I'm like literally shaking still. My stomach does feel better, Were but... Were you live when that happened? Or? No. No, I was recording, but... I just... It's every... Every time I... Like, I'll feel fine. I'll go in there, and that'll happen. I'll feel sick. So I'll come back out, and then I feel fine. And, bro, my dumbass do go back in there. But it's always in front of Annabelle. Every single time was in front of Annabelle. First one we were interviewing... Every time I was standing for, I've never had an object make me like. I've never had that happen like yeah. that. I took a, I took a couple of snapshots of a few. Are you dealing with? Oh, them? great! Are you dealing nice. With them? I'll send, here, I'll send them to you. Are you uh, personally dealing with anything? I mean, like I'm always dealing with something. You know what I mean? But overall, no. I mean, my spirits are pretty yeah. good, and um, yeah, I've been pretty happy. I can't complain. Like I feel as, as soon as I walk out, I feel completely fine now. Yeah. Thank you guys for the water too. Really appreciate you taking care of me. That was really nice. You want me? You want me to message you? If you get any words, we're gonna get the fucking shovel and start digging a hole. Oh man, I feel like so much better now that I'm outside, guys. I've never experienced anything like that. It literally happened like three or four times. Like I keep wanting to go back in there so bad, and I do, and then I get sick. And it's it's so strange because when I'm on the left side. No problem, don't feel sick one bit. As soon as I get over by that freaking Annabelle doll, I immediately feel super sick. I almost threw up right there inside, and they were like, no, no, go. Luckily, I made it outside, and that, let's just say, that was not a good show. But 
these guys are really nice treated me really good gave me some water you know big big shout out to these guys every single time james went outside to throw up in a couple of minutes he said he felt so much better he almost felt like he was back to normal then he thought he could come back inside of the building and soon after he said it felt like something was coming up his body into his chest and just kind of making him feel nauseated making him feel lightheaded to the point where he just needs to pro he was projectile vomiting like way out a total of six times when james threw up the sixth time that is when tony said to him that he's not allowed back into the building for the day because he is clearly vulnerable to the dark energy within now he says that this happens a lot he says that just back when they used to do tours all the time that this would be a normal occurrence and it seems that james is just another one of those people that is more vulnerable to the items and the dark energies within. I didn't have these nauseated feelings. However, I definitely felt tight in the chest and I will say something for sure. Even when I was alone inside of this museum, it genuinely felt like I wasn't alone. The presence was so powerful, it felt as if I was standing in a crowded room. Now imagine me here right now with maybe 15 people around me. It genuinely felt like that in the museum when I was alone. It was one of the most horrifying things. And like I said, you're going to see me in a different light when I am alone because I was scared. I was nervous. And it, it's a scary feeling inside of here. With that being said, though, it's time to get into what happened when I was alone. Now, this is some crazy shit because listen, I didn't know about this until I left and reviewed the footage. Something affected my camera when I went up to the real Annabelle doll when I was alone. Now, I have never experienced anything like this in my life. I have been to some of the most haunted locations in the United States, and I've been really close to some of these haunted items and nothing like this. And this is a item that is in a case, blessed, sealed, and it's still able to affect my footage like this. I'm just gonna let it play for you Take a look for yourself. If you guys hear anything, if you guys see anything, let me know down in the comment section below. But take a look at what happened when I was face to face with the real Annabelle doll. So right now, I am completely alone inside of the Warren's Occult Museum. I'm standing here with the world's most haunted and demonic Delicious. items. And standing right in front of me is the most haunted and demonic item of all time. The haunted Annabelle doll. Now, I will be investigating this entire museum as well as doing something a little special later on in the night, so be ready for that. However, is there anybody here that would like to communicate with me? Give me a sign. Now, here's the thing. I want to approach this very differently than what I normally do on this channel. We have to understand that these are the most evil, demonic, items and although they are cleansed and they normally get cleansed once a month they are still evil and all it takes is one wrong move and it is let free and that's what i want to avoid so for example Now, that's the real Annabelle doll. This is the one that you see in the movies. As well as the many other wanted items. <sighs> this right here is the satanic idol. This is an item so haunted that it sent Lorraine Warren to the hospital for three days. And... They believe, and Ed believes, that this is from a satanic priest that put a curse on Ed's family. This was found in the forest, and it is believed to be one of the most haunted items of all time. Altar. Probably. I'm going to be honest, guys. I've been investigating the paranormal for quite some time now, and I've never felt what I'm feeling right now. Uh, the energy in here is unlike anything I've ever experienced. I mean that wholeheartedly. Um, it just genuinely feels like I'm surrounded. And the thing is, is I am by the most evil 
entities in the world. So, you know, this doll right here survived the fire and is believed to maybe even cause the fire. And I mean, every item in here has its own story. And we will be covering that with the full interview with the son-in-law of Ed and Lorraine Warren. Man, it's kind of hard to breathe in here. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Um, can you give me a sign if there's somebody that's willing to communicate with me? Hello? That was weird. Um, hold on one second. I just want to confirm. Really, really. Man, it's a mixture of a lot of things. Uh, just nervousness and everything. I'm approaching this in a very different way than I normally would on my channel. You know, I'm a very outgoing person and I like to make jokes and I like to, you know, this is one of those locations where you cannot do that. You have to enter this in a very, very different way. And um, Annabelle, is it okay if I stand here and film? Is it okay if I take a photo with you? If it's not okay, give me a sign telling me know that it is not okay to film here and film you. This is the real, original news article. Raggedy Ann doll puts hex on three. This doll is deadly. Challenge. I'm not gonna lie, that scared me. I completely forgot that I was even running. Challenge. I'm gonna be doing a lot of investigating here, as well as couple of other locations as well. Yeah. Unfortunately, this is where it ends in regards to my video because everything that was recorded after what you just watched is corrupted. All of my video files are unaccessible. On my camera, it says file not found, file not supported. When I try to open it on my computer, same exact deal. I cannot open these files. I tried everything. I've downloaded software, spent hundreds of dollars trying to recover these files, but nothing works. This is really annoying, guys. I've tried basically everything that I could, and I'm, I'm not having the best luck, but I just purchased a couple of software programs that are said to be able to recover SD card files. They were a couple of hundred dollars each, so I'm hoping it works. Let's give it a shot. But I also want to show you something else. As you guys can see, the files that are in the video are here. There's a lot of B-roll footage as well, but these are the files. It's really weird because all of those files are available. There's no problem with any of them, but it's right when what you just watched when I was alone in the Warren's Museum and it seemed as if both of my cameras were being affected by something that after that, all of my files are done for. I don't know. It's weird. I'm hoping I get these files back. However, if I don't, I guess that just proves to you that there is something incredibly strong there to be able to do that. It is one of the weirdest things that I have ever experienced. Now, usually when this happens, it's either the entire SD card, but not a certain segment. So what I tried was I went out and filmed using the same exact SD card while keeping all the original files on there. And what do you know? It works like a charm. It works perfectly fine. Something in that museum affected my footage, affected my camera to the point where it didn't allow me to continue recording. And not only that, but it, maybe it didn't want me to see something or maybe it didn't want me to showcase something to the world. I don't know. 
but it's one of the weirdest things that I have ever seen. Now, I want to hear what you guys have to say about this. Let me know down in the comment section below because genuinely, I, I was blown away. And, you know, leaving this place, I left with a, no a lot of knowledge. I left with one of the things on my bucket list scratched off, so that's pretty cool. But I left with a different view on the paranormal, about demons, about all things otherworldly. I can't imagine something like that was in that room, let loose and able to just harm people. Because I look at my friend James, for example, who was blessed, who came in saying prayers over and over again and was still affected to the point where he couldn't step back into the place. So this was one of those locations, one of those experiences that definitely changes you as a person and changes your entire outlook on a certain thing. And... Um, like I said, I'd love to hear what you guys think down in the comment section below. I want to give a big thank you to Tony, to Dan, to Chris. You guys are absolutely amazing. Thank you for this opportunity. It's a dream come true to come here. It's a dream come This is every paranormal creator. Actually, as a matter of fact, anyone who has an interest in the paranormal, this is a dream of theirs to come to. To be able to film here, to be able to experience what I did, I'm forever grateful and forever in your debt. Thank you. And um, like I said, if you do want to see the real Annabelle doll yourselves, guys, you want to see me, James, probably throwing up. I don't know. At this rate, who knows? But if you want to see everybody, as well as the real Annabelle doll, the satanic idol, the shadow doll, and more, make sure to click that link down in the description below. Check it out. Come see us all October 28th. And um, yeah, see you guys in the next paranormal investigation. Peace.